Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. If we could get 400 likes on the video that would be bloody fantastic. Now, enjoy some highlights of the games we've played this month. It's been a pretty solid month, few little things we need to clear up, but enjoy these and I'll see you guys in a sec. It's now at the corner for Crawley and oh it's gone over the line. Fenelon puts it in the back of the net and Crawley have the lead with their first shot and it's from a set piece again. All the way across for Ibu Torre, Barsham needs to get it across Torre. Across for Harris, Tony Harris at the back post. Wimbledon won, Crawley won, Tony Harris first goal of the season and great performance from him today leading the team. All the way across and Grandison at the other end of it. Wimbledon 2, Crawley 1 and a first ever Wimbledon goal for Jermaine Grandison. Reeves slips it through for Rattray, he's got a man over. That man is Colin Murphy. Can Colin Murphy get his first ever goal for Wimbledon? He can. Wimbledon 3, Crawley 1, Colin Murphy with the goal. Brilliant stuff. There we go, Wimbledon 3, Crawley Town 1 and we're through to the next round here on the edge of the box. If we can get something away from home. Saville, what a strike from... Dumbledore said Jimmy Saville. That's so terrible. George Saville, 1-0 to Wimbledon. Brilliant start here away at City. Brian with the ball across and headed straight in by Gunning and yet another goal from a set piece. Brilliant stuff. Brian with the ball whipped in. And are you fucking joking? We've considered three goals this year, all from fucking corners. I'm sick of it. Here we go, guys. Corner kicks two, Wimbledon one. Up steps Lyle Taylor. Can he convert the penalty? He does. Wimbledon won at Ipswich Town nil. Our home form could be our saving grace this year. It really could. Goldrick. Slips it through for Murphy. Murphy's in and Murphy scores. Daryl Murphy. Wimbledon won. Ipswich won. Disappointing. We've done all right today. Space now. Shenton. Can he look out wide maybe? Up for Taylor. Slips it through for Fabio. Can he turn? Goes back for Lyle Taylor. That is lovely football from Fabio to actually find Taylor. Little one two. Wimbledon two. Uh... Ipswich won. Brilliant goal. Get out to him. Put a block in. Something. Oh, how has he scored from that angle? Wimbledon 2. Ipswich Town 2. Very, very, very disappointing to concede there. Taylor steps up again. Completes his hat-trick. It's 3-2 to Wimbledon. Taylor scythed down as he was going through on goal. Don't know why there wasn't a red card, but it is 3-2 to Wimbledon. I can very nearly did well there, but we're going to struggle to hang on here, I can tell. Nudson. This is a goal. Oh, for God's sake. How many chances do we need? There we go, Wimbledon 3, Ipswich 3. That was a very, very bizarre game. I'm not really sure what to make of it. We've done nothing in this game, so if we get away with a point, that would be a good result in my mind. Reeves, can you pull it across? Murphy's in there and he's bloody scored. Wimbledon 1, Charlton 0, Colin Murphy with the goal. This would be an absolute smash and grab if we get it. Ow, Wimbledon 1, Charlton Athletic 0. Great win. Through for Adair. He's through and it's a great strike from Adair. Burnley have the lead here within two minutes and Adair's first goal for Burnley puts them in front. Up to Bell. Can he see it through maybe? Goes around the side here. Murphy's in and it's another good strike from him and it's another goal for Colin Murphy. Third goal of the season. Brilliant stuff from him. Up to Rattray. Can he find Murphy? He can. Can Murphy get past his man? Goes back to Rattray. Can he see it back through? Murphy's in again. He scored another one. Wimbledon 2. Premier League Burnley nil at 1. Colin Murphy scores a brace today. What a brilliant performance though. Throws inside and Colin Murphy's in behind again. He's had a wonderful game. Ball to the back post. Kavarik with the strike and it is now 3-1 to Wimbledon. Colin Murphy links up brilliantly and Kavarik puts it in the back of the net for 3-1. There we go. Wimbledon 3, Premier League Burnley 1. Colin Murphy, what a man. Right guys, we are back and as you can see, 7 points after 4 matches, 6 points clear of the relegation side already. A very, very solid start, frankly. Um, we're going to look in like, I think staying up should be no problem this year. I think the home form is what's going to be our saving grace. We've already, you know, we've got all 7 of them those points at home so far and frankly I think we did well enough against Bristol City probably to get something from the game but unfortunately set pieces absolutely screwed us over in that match it was a horrible one um they literally had two highlights and they were both set pieces and that was it done but there you go we're gonna do a question today as well today's question is this if you could move to another country where would you go uh simple Sweden easy easily Sweden um, I'd love to go to Sweden I'd love to Frank I wouldn't mind living there to be honest uh, but do let me know guys what country you'd like to move to and where you live currently um, and where you'd like to go you see what I mean yeah <laughs> and drop those in the comments too and if you do have any uh, ideas for a question today of course drop those in the comments as well with the hashtag QOTD so yeah we've had a decent month uh, it's been great and remember Cole Murphy has had an absolute stormer I cannot believe how well he's played in the cup um, he got a goal of the a cup against Crawley and then he got two against Burnley Premier League Burnley I should say and we've knocked them out I played a weakened team because I wanted to rest players for the league which was important because we'd already fulfilled our cup uh, requirement of getting to the second round of the league cup but the, the youth well not the youth a lot of the younger players went out there and they beat Burnley anyway brilliant stuff cannot believe it our home form has been superb so far so that's how things look at the moment we're seventh Lots of goals going in. Lyle Taylor is top scorer in the division, which is fantastic, thanks to his hat-trick against uh, Ipswich Town. Looking at the squad, 
Um, of course, we need to go back onto my old menu for this. <laughs> so I keep going onto other saves, and it's very, very frustrating when I keep coming back and fight. Right, okay. So, goals, obviously, yeah. The best five games. Let's look at this. So Lyle Taylor still with an 8.40, but Darren Bell also played a little bit there. Jake Reeves has done well as well. Now, we've made one more addition to the team. Now, I have been looking at loan signings. It's been so damn difficult. It really, really has um, just to get anyone to join us, which has been a real problem. But the one player we have brought in on loan is Fabio. He is, well, I mean, it says here that he's not particularly great at deep line four, but I beg to differ. He's got really good passing. He's got decent enough finishing. His dribbling isn't bad either. He's got solid stats for a deep line forward, Rob. We've got him on loan from Atletico Mineiro over in Brazil. Um, I actually wanted to get him in permanently at first, but I thought... I don't know whether they were actually going to let us have him, but the point is that we've got him alone, which means we can scout him a bit further, because um, I didn't have him fully scouted. I was just desperate to get someone in that I thought might be able to play there. And I can, from what I could see, he looked decent. So we brought him in, and he's going to be our sort of other deep line forward, which means Loveridge doesn't have to play every single match, and he's quite equipped to play that role, I think. He's not had a brilliant start to his career here, I have to say. His performances so far in the three games have been uh, bad frankly they've been pretty poor but I'm hoping once he gets a goal he'll start to build a little bit of confidence in himself so that's all I've really been able to do in terms of um defenders I stri I struggled so hard and we just couldn't find any so we're just gonna have to hope that our defense can hold up this year at the moment um you know with regards to the scouting obviously we've only had the summer so there's a limited amount of what I can do my scouts haven't had a lot of time to build up big lists of players for me just yet I've managed to do kind of what I've done with very little on those lists and I've picked up what I can here and there that's basically the way it's worked obviously the British transfers were all still fine they were able to find plenty of players there still but I think it's going to be, won't be till next year that I can start bringing in that plethora of players for my youth conveyor belt uh, sort of idea where we just keep bringing in the youngsters and they keep d developing through them. That's what, what won us the Champions League with Portsmouth. It, it, it's just how it worked. And I intend to do the same thing for Wimbledon, but I feel like we're going to get to start a little bit earlier on it, which is beautiful because it means by the Premier League days, we might actually have a really good squad bubbling underneath us. Now, one thing you might also notice is Tony Harris is gone. He, he's gone. There's just something else I wanted to talk about. Um, no, right. Basically, Tony Harris is gone. Um... I was thinking about maybe keeping him, but then we got a bid in from Palace and they let me negotiate it. He's gone for £300,000 plus 50% of next sale clause. It had to be done. Uh, no one else would offer it, but Palace would. So three hundred grand plus that sale clause is important because I feel like... And we get even more money once he's made his first appearance for Wales. And because he's that good, I feel like he will make that appearance very, very soon, which means more money in the kitty for us. So all in all, a very good uh, piece of work there. So let's get into the match today against Huddersfield. Now, I was actually tempted to play... Um, where are Huddersfield in the league? They're 14th. And they're playing a 4-4-1-1. I was tempted to go and play our uh, Orinoco 2 type of system. But I just feel like today might be a good day to just go with what we've got. Uh, Kavalik isn't exactly hugely fit. But unfortunately, um, we've still got injury problems. Um, where is it? Andy Barcham is... Oh, he's back nearly. I might get him on, though. If Kavarik isn't quite working out, we'll bring him on. So we're going to go Fabio up there, Taylor, Kavarik. I'm probably going to start Franco and not Loveridge. They they keep wanting to put Loveridge in there, my assistant. I don't know why, because Franco is much better there. So we're going to go with, yeah, Fabio, Taylor, Kavarik, Saville, Reeves, um, Torre, Grandison, Anderson. Grandison and Anderson, that is a great pairing. Fuller and, of course, Bachman. Um, so, yeah, I think we're looking decent. We're getting there. The midfield particularly is looking lovely with Shenton able to come in as well. Colin Murphy on the bench, of course, because he's getting some game time this year. No doubt about that. Uh, a decent bench. Things are looking a lot better for us. That's for sure. So, it's a shame we couldn't keep out of Bear Aziz, basically. If you actually were wondering, because I don't think I actually mentioned it in the last episode, what happened with him was, um, although he was brilliant for us, and he got a reasonable amount of game time, uh, when it came to actually giving him a new contract, he just said he was unhappy at the club and wasn't going to stay. So, it's a real shame there, but what can you do? Uh, we're away from home, so... <sighs> What I'm thinking, though, is in the future, perhaps away from home, the best approach might be to go for that Orinoco 2 with the defensive winger, just to make ourselves a little bit more compact on the road. Um, but we'll see how our sort of form is over the first 10 matches. I'm going to play this system for the first 10 league matches. That way I can get a proper good analysis of where we're going wrong, where we're going right, and I can start to make some changes based on that, basically. That's what I'm going to do. I feel like we should be good enough over that period to get enough points to be safe enough for that period. Fabio's not the quickest, um, so we're going to need to be... Uh, we need to be careful where we play him. Loveridge has got a bit more pace about him because, of course, he is a winger by trade. And that's probably why he was able to flourish in that role within this system. Um, Torres apparently not fouled in there. I don't know how we got the ball out of that, but there we go. Saville. Uh, can he find a pass? That's a poor one to Fabio, but he's in a little bit more space now. Saville to Reeves. Can he slip it through? Goes out wide for Frankham. Ball across the box. Taylor's header and he scored another one. It's Huddersfield Town nil. Wimbledon won. Incredibly. We have the lead here against Huddersfield Town, which is just unbelievable stuff. Um, I genuinely can't believe it. 
it's our first shot on the game and we're leading. And we would actually go up into second. I'm not expecting what happened last year to happen this year. It just isn't going to happen like that. This system is not going to get us triple promotions. Um, it just isn't. Not with the squad we've got. What a ball that is from Reeves. First time ball put back across from George Frankham. And Lyle Taylor just nudges his little header in there. And that's his sixth goal in five league matches. The perfect start from Lyle Taylor. A player that last season ended the season in pretty shocking form, to be honest. But Huddersfield, remember, came down from the Premier League last year. So, uh and ball into Fabio and Taylor's in acres here no one else across though which is disappointing back to Smithies they've got Smith and Smithies which is interesting um Granderson to Anderson bit of head tennis there but we've kept the ball nicely Fuller to Reeves bear in mind this is a very similar system to that which Luton played Taylor's through again here Taylor's through again and it very nearly and probably should have been 2-0 to Wimbledon there um Huddersfield are looking vulnerable against us at the moment I mean, I know it said in the scout report that they were weak against those 4-4-1-1 uh, type of systems, but Jesus, I don't think it's going to be quite like the Luton game, but this looks like the one tactic particularly that is like, we are kryptonite too. Um, that being said, oh God, bruised head for Lyle Taylor. Okay, it might be a time for Colin Murphy to come on then. Taylor, can he whip it across? Frankham, pull it back, gets it in. Falcao, Kavarik is at the pack post and it is 2-0 to Wimbledon. Incredible. I don't even know where to go with this now. Thomas Kavarik at the back post and... The Bristol City game, even that game, we didn't look too bad. Ipswich, we looked a little bit weak. Um, I have to say, we were very lucky probably in a way to get... A, and then again, we created some good chances. Frankham's ball to the back post. Little flick on almost from Fabio. And Kovarik puts in his first league goal, I think, for us. Getting in there at the far post. And it's Huddersfield nil, Wimbledon 2. Brilliant start to the season for us. And that's what we needed. I just want to make sure that we get enough window, wins under our belt to keep us clear of the relegation zone. That's the main thing. You know, we can experiment with a little bit after 10 games and see where we are. And kind of go from there. Luton have had a shocking start. They've lost every game. I think they're going to lose another one today. Um, now, it is 2-0 to us, and that's fine. But I still worry about their ability to come back. Hill, oh, that's such a good goal. Um, and unfortunately, we've been done by the same thing that always does us. Those low crosses, getting past the fullback and getting the ball in. That's one area that we just don't have the strength for at the moment. Toure wasn't quick, wasn't as quick as Hall. Hall puts it across, and of course, it's Naki Wells there. And Backman very nearly kept it out with his knees in the end, but it wasn't enough. Um, damn it. Okay, well, it's still a solid start. Um, we're going to get to half time and try to analyse where we are in this game because it's very even in most senses. Lyle Taylor, bruised head again. Um, oh, come on now. Really? Both strikers? Okay, well, that's a thigh strain. He is going to have to come off and he is going to be replaced by James Loveridge, of course. Um, we could end up replacing both strikers in this game at this rate, but I feel like if we're winning later on, particularly if we grab a third goal, then Colin Murphy might not be such a bad choice to bring in. Uh-oh, that's going to be a goal. Oh, look, the goalkeeper didn't bother coming out again. Oh, I'm so bored of it. There was a situation in one of the other games that we played, um, which we didn't actually score from, thankfully, because they hit it straight at him. When Backman, the ball was like here. The player was here and Backman was there. He didn't come out and collect the ball. He just waited for them to run all the way up to him and kick it straight at him, thankfully. But what is with that stuff? It's very, very fr frustrating to have this sort of stuff happen so often. Humphreys knocks it down. It's played through. He, he, he just... Look how close he gets to him. He could easily have picked that up or just run out and thrown himself at it. But it is Huddersfield 2, Wimbledon 2. Really, really, really fucking disappointing, that. Um, but again, goalkeepers. Yeah, it's not going to change, is it? So there we go. Um, in before, you need a new goalkeeper. So let's take a little look at the opposition instructions, maybe. See if we can come up with anything. I think we played well in that first half. But I think there are some changes that can be made to try and improve things. Or I've had some other things on in previous matches to try and figure some stuff out uh, let's see Huddersfield key passes five we've had seven who's been making those passes though? that's what I'm interested in um, oh, let's turn off all of this sort of stuff and this sort of stuff 21 19 19 19 oh it's 19 who the hell is 19 um, oh it's it's, <laughs> it's Hall um, pass completion is huge uh, interestingly we're actually set to type mark him already why aren't we closing him down then let's just get right in on this lad and see if that makes any difference because he's looking superb in this second half. Uh, apologies if you can hear some noises in the background. Uh, it's just one of those things, unfortunately. You can't really pick a decent time of day to do this kind of stuff because it is still very early, unfortunately. Um, Holmes. Ah. Uh, I'm very, very annoyed in a way because we've, we've thrown away a two goal lead. Huddersfield have come back well. Don't, you know, don't ignore that. But the fact that we've let them score those. Well, the first goal was actually a very good goal. But that second one just really annoys me because of those goals that I just don't know what we can possibly do instruction-wise to stop that from happening. I just don't think it's possible. It's really frustrating, particularly when you play a sweeping system. Um, but, I mean, I used to concede goals like that when we didn't play sweeping systems. With Wales, I don't think we played a sweeper keeper and we used to get that sort of stuff all the time. It's just one of those things, unfortunately, guys. Right, so 
Sorry about that. I just thought I'd just stop the recording for a bit until you could sort of... There wasn't any background noise. Um, so, let's just see. I mean, a two-wheel draw away from home isn't the worst result in the world, but it kind of is in a way when you're 2-0 up. If we can get back in front, though, that'd be quite a comeback, in a way. Uh, Fuller to Taylor. Can he get it across for someone? Will he go for a goal himself? Goes back out for Fuller. We've had a lot of penalties this year so far. Reeves is in there. It's come through. It's going to come to Loveridge, and he's put it in. Very, very lucky goal there. That bounced all over the place, and it falls to Loveridge, who puts it in the back of the net for us, and we go back in front again, amazingly, um, which is incredible, and would send us back up to second. Leicester City are uh, doing a bloody good job so far, but this was just pure luck. The way this ricocheted around, uh, somehow... Oh dear, really bad defending from Huddersfield. Loveridge just has a chance to put that into an empty net for 3-2 to Wimbledon. Lots of goals being scored by us this year, that's what I would say. Defensively, we're always going to take a little bit of a hit on that one. But going forward, we do look very, very solid as usual. Now, George Savile is probably going to have to come off for Oliver Shenton. And I'm actually thinking, Lyle Taylor has done well today, but I just feel like he deserves a chance. Colin Murphy deserves a chance to show me that he's going to be good enough to actually play for us in the league regularly this year. Uh, oh crap, and this is going to be a simple... Oh, what a block that was. I don't know if that's actually the chance. Gone. That was a fantastic piece of defending in the end because yet again, the goalkeeper failed to close the angle down. Reeves, there's plenty of options for him here. One of them is Kovarik, who I'm really impressed with since he's come in. He scored a couple of goals, got an assist or two, I think. So I'm pleased with his work so far, but I'm wondering what to do at this point. Um, do we drop deeper? Because they're actually looking pretty... Uh, pretty damn solid, to be honest, at this point. I'm just wondering if maybe us dropping deeper might just stop them from getting those low crosses in uh, because that's kind of what where they look most the strongest uh, from set pieces and low crosses. Jonathan Hogg's now injured for them. If we were to get an away win here, I'd feel that they would probably be very, very unlucky to lose this. Uh, they've been really good in this second half. And frankly, they were good in the first half too. So, But, you know, sometimes you need a little bit of luck. Against Charlton, we were definitely not the better side in that game, but we did get the win uh, thanks to a little bit of luck in that one too. So maybe the luck's going for us this year and it might just be enough to keep us up, basically. Frankham into the box and cleared away to Fuller. But that is going to be it. Huddersfield Town 2, Wimbledon 3. Our first away win and you guys get to see it in the live com two assists for george frankham again superb performance again and we go up well we go up to fifth with that result and that's very very good and that keeps us what seven points clear of the relegation zone and that's nice to see i'm not i'm expecting us to finish somewhere around sort of 12 13th this year that's my, where my targets are um frankly but you know you never know what can happen of course but i'd like to think that's where we're probably going to end up we're going to get some bad form but i think after 10 league matches i'll have a better idea of kind of where things are heading and i can kind of analyze things particularly in the away games and see if maybe playing that defensive winger uh, style system away from home is a better approach because bear in mind today we got very lucky and on another day on most days we would have lost this match so next game now i'm just thinking we've got manchester city in the league cup the problem is we're, we're gonna lose because it's away from home and oh sergio aguero is out with a broken leg terrible stuff for him um but you know is it really worth us doing it? Because it's just the live con that we're going to lose. And I feel like maybe doing the Leicester one in the league would be a far more entertaining game. I'm just going to make a judgment call on this and say we're going to do the Leicester one. We've got some really tough away games coming up against Reading and Brentford, as well as a home game against Forest, which should be a fun one. But Leicester in the league at home could be a really top game, um, particularly as it will be a tough one for us. The other thing is we were 200 to 1 to win the league this year. We are... Uh, expected to finish bottom of the league and we're already in fifth so doing well so far i don't expect to see what we did last year but still it's good right sorry about that guys some more background noises so i had to cut the recording off but yeah we're back and uh basically yeah so we're gonna do leicester in the next game that, that's the most important thing is to do leicester and get going um i want to see if we can get a couple more wins under our belt but those ones will be tough well, actually reading away might be a winnable one brentford home uh, away will be tough though anyway guys if you like what you've seen and you've enjoyed our start to the season please do drop a like on the video that'll be bloody amazing and by the way we move into our new stadium at the end of this season so that's gonna be cool Eleven thousand seats it's pretty damn small still but what can you do i'll see you guys in the next episode for a home game against leicester city that's gonna be a fun one i'll see you guys soon thank you so much for watching Bye bye